Hello, everyone. Today, we are here to introduce our book, Modernization, The Fine Art of Offsite Pre-Assembly for Capital Projects. The hard copy of the book was published in February 2023, almost a year ago. So why a video on it now? Since the book was published, we have received a lot of questions about the book, its contents, and our availability for presentations and lectures on it. We realize a short introductory video about the book would be beneficial to explain the basis for the book and why someone should take time to read it. We start by introducing ourselves and our book by chapter. My co-author, Mr. Michael Clough, is one of the industry's leading experts in modernization with literally billions of dollars of modernization experience. In particular, he has 48 years of industry experience and has been involved in molar projects and project management since 1985. His practical knowledge of the subject is the basis for the hands-on, step-by-step approach seen in many of the book's concepts and examples. His enthusiasm for the subject is reflected in the book and has provided him with presentation opportunities at the industry conference throughout the US and Europe, as well as lecture invitations at universities in the US and Far East. Along with his support of all projects Molar for his company, he continues to actively engage in modernization research through the University of Texas Construction Industry Institute, where he also sits as chair of the modernization community of business advancement. Thank you, Dr. Choi. Um, my co-author, Dr. Janook Choi, is an associate professor at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas and a leading scholar and educator in the field of modularization with a master's and PhD in civil architectural environmental engineering from the University of Texas at Austin uh, in construction engineering and project management along with his bachelor's of civil engineering from Korea University, he has become a prolific writer on the subject, having authored over 50 journal papers, conference papers, and technical reports, articles, and tools just on modularization. He was my go-to resource for scholastic research backing up the practical implementation examples and procedures provided in the book. So his extensive uh, teaching and research experience includes the following, academic advisor to the Construction Industry Institute modularization community of business advancement since, since 2012, teaching a graduate level course, modular construction since 2016 at the University of Las Vegas, a PhD dissertation identifying the links between modularization critical success factors and project performance roles in the CIT RT396 business case analysis for industrial modularization as a principal investigator, and he participated in the RT283 modularization research. He was recipient of the Modular Building Fellow Award in 2023 for his work at the University of Las Vegas in Nevada in the classroom and lab, his papers and research on modularization, hosting a complete conference, uh, of course, our new book, and his support of MBI and industry in general. Uh, lead guest speaker on special collections of modularization and standard strategies in the construction industry. Now, a comment about the title of this book, Modularization, the Fine Art of Offsite Preassembly for Capital Projects. What's in a title? We wanted something catchy, but more importantly, descriptive and indic indicative of what the book is about. After all, it is the first thing anyone sees and really needs to reflect what's inside. Modularization is not new. It is not revolutionary. It's been applied to industrial plants, both onshore and offshore for over 50 years. However, in many cases, it was not correctly incorporated or implemented, resulting in a less than desirable project solution and a subsequent project solution conclusion that 
modularization was wrong or modularization was a bad idea. This wrong conclusion carried over into the planning of the next several projects. This is where the art comes in. We are engineers by background and probably are blessed with maybe only one or two artistic bones in our collective bodies. But we both recognize the great work of art. We cannot tell you what makes the work great because at face value, the inputs are the same. Oil, brushes, and canvas. So obviously it's the way the tools and materials are combined and used. A successful module project is quite similar. It uses the same inputs as a stick belt project, but they are mixed up in a complex combination of slightly different approaches and then implemented in a certain sequence to be successful. Fortunately, we do know how and do understand what makes a module job great. After reading this book, we believe that you will have a better understanding of what it takes to make a module job successful to the point where you can successfully implement this philosophy shift. So why did we write the book? We saw too many of the same project mistakes happening again and again on module jobs. We recognize that industry did not have a true soup to nuts guide on the industrial modularization philosophy. We can identify volumes of research and theory that have been produced over the years, but found very little published on-site application guidance. In addition, we work with an industry driven by specs, rules, and regulations, resulting in a tendency to avoid change if something seems to be working even if it isn't working very well. As a result, many of us supporting engineers and managers in this industry tend to be too linear and unwavering in our approach to problems and not very willing to, quote, adjust. Modularization requires adjustment to the standard stick-built approach that are dictated by the unique requirements of each project. A one-size-fits-all approach does not work. So how do we get this point across to the reader who might not think this way? We start from the beginning. We go, go over some very basic stuff like definitions, concepts, and module tenets. Then each chapter builds on this groundwork until by the end of the book, you have the basics of what it takes to implement a module project. We even provide a make-believe project built on an island that cannot be found anywhere in the world. Sounds intriguing? We think it is. We only suggest that you follow our guidelines and work through the book chapter by chapter as written. And now I'll turn it over to Dr. Choi for chapter one. All right. Thank you, Michael. Chapter one sets the basics in terms of what is needed from a ground level, basic understanding of the concepts and terms. While uh, this may seem elementary, it is critical because everyone has their own definition of what a module is or what it is not. And as a result, a preconceived notion of what is involved in its development. It addresses the current state of industrial construction and why it continues to see productivity decline to the point where the projects are becoming unsustainable with the traditional stick built methodology. In addition, other sectors such as manufacturing and shipbuilding are examined in terms of how uh, they have addressed their productivity issues and succeeded in a major turnaround in cost and schedule, and how mobilization offers a similar potential advance in both. Then, based on the foundation uh, laid that mobilization is this industry's alternative, Details are explored around the uh, variability of the optimal molar answer and how a one size does not fit all. Finally, the chapter further ground expectation by discussing what modulation is not. Cool. Chapter two follows the basic described in chapter one with further details on the modularization concept, including a high level look at why the module fabrication yard is such an ideal place for module assembly. More details are provided in terms of advantages of selecting this project approach, as well as some disadvantages or what we call challenges of this project execution method. Chapter three describes the industry status on modularization through a compilation of 25 actual case projects 
In terms of observed advantages, cost and schedule savings compared to stick build approach, as well as difficulties, impediments, business case drivers, and types of mode units, along with a concluding analysis of the results. This chapter validates the advantages and disadvantages which were initially identified in chapter two via uh, this set of actual case project histories and sets the stage for the following chapters, which address how to properly set up and execute a modular project in more detail. Okay, previous chapters define modularization and module terms, mentioned the advantages and challenges, and spoke about why the industry needs to really embrace the alternatives to stick-built execution, but they did not provide details on the module themselves. Chapter four explains the length and breadth, and height, no pun intended, of module variability. Modules are defined and described in terms of their more common types, with the goal of providing a basis for understanding the term modularization. Further, the chapter delves into module considerations necessary to develop a successful project, concentrating on those unique to the module philosophy, such as the plot plan development and equipment layout, typical module size ranges, the optimal module size, and then the division of responsibility guidance in terms of engineering design and material procurement. Chapter five begins the discussion of the modularization business case as a logical extension of the information provided by the previous four chapters. Why a module is, why modularization is important, implementation challenges, and module configuration. It explains what makes a project a good candidate for modularization, the factors to consider, the importance of timing in modularization considerations, modular project execution planning steps by project basis, and provides a business case analysis tool. It also provides guidance on how to identify the project specific details necessary to determine the optimal module case. The three key tools addressed in this chapter are the business case considerations, the 13 step business case model, and a usable financial analysis model. Chapter six presents how to manage the project philosophy shift to the modular approach via the module team, identifying key team members, their qualifications, and how the team should be incorporated into the overall project management. Included in this is a deep dive into explaining how the execution of a module project differs from the stick built project. These major execution plan differences are identified in terms of what they are, when they should be first incorporated into a module execution, and their priority for implementation within each project phase, all visually presented in an easy to read project phase matrix. Chapter seven complements chapter six, which is execution plan differences, because together they provide the foundational basis or why the module job is so different. This chapter explains the concept of critical success factors, how they were developed, and their importance to the success or failure of a molar project. The 21 identified critical success factors are equated to a listing of a common mistakes identified on molar projects that failed or were only marginally successful. The chapter further examines the critical success factors in terms of difficulty of accomplishment and identifies an ideal time for initial implementation and who has primary responsibility. Finally, a somewhat um, Whimsical exercise involving the module perfect zone is provided, a hypothetical scenario of a module job where almost everything is aligned in terms of the worst possible outcomes and comments on the conclusions are reached. Chapter eight continues the explanation initiated in chapter two of the benefits of the fabrication yard, which can provide in terms of the overall module project execution. 
Specifics are examined in terms of location, physical size and layout, and operational philosophy. Project guidelines for yard selection are suggested in terms of size, location, complexity, and number of yards utilized. In addition, contracting strategies are discussed in terms of pros and cons, as well as what seems to work best for us. Options on the division of responsibility regarding who provides what are addressed and sections as well as suggestions provided. Chapter nine takes everything provided in terms of basic learning in the first eight chapters and uses this molar basis of understanding to look at and make decisions on how to approach some of the aspects of the typical molar project in terms of each project group involved. This chapter gets uh, down to the nuts and bolts, or as some suggest, gets into the weeds of the molar, molar analysis. It is where the devil in the details of the previous general molar statements is exposed. It is filled with personal experiences, both good and some not so good, but the content is universal and provides an idea of the types of decisions to be faced, including engineering considerations, such as uh, module evolution, timing, discipline hierarchy, backyard coordination, fabrication considerations, such as structural members, welding versus vaulting, sub-assemblies, and weight control, completion, testing pre-commissioning, such as what is complete pre-commissioning and trade-offs, shipping within considerations, such as uh, basic logistic, motion analysis, village, and sea fastening, loadout, such as method and design considerations, lastly, movement to site and hookup, such as design considerations, and a single well hookup. Chapter 10 is our, our second most favorite chapter of the book in terms of its development and the culmination of the previous nine chapters. Chapter nine took all the basics from previous chapters and used this information as a basis to help identify and resolve issues that typically come up when planning and implementing a module project from the technical standpoint. Chapter 10, takes a slightly different approach, going all the way back to the left on the project timeline into opportunity framing or FEL zero, but walking through potential client, contractor, and vendor, vendor interactions required during the early stage of project development. It also includes a detailed five-step method for early module screening analysis that builds on the 13-step business case discussed in chapter five. Other specific items covered are module tenants, common misunderstandings in terms of the module philosophy, initial project analysis requirements and timing of required discussions and decisions, and recovery options should the module decision be made late in the project life. Chapter 11 is the development of a composite made for this book, Modular Project Case Study Exercise. The hypothetical case study exercise walks the reader through a molar project development, beginning with a summary of the project and proposed facilities. Each phase of the project is considered with information typically available at that time in the project development. The reader must take the information available and based on what is known, make assumptions and develop a plan forward answering typical project management questions at the end of project phase. This effort is reiterated through each phase of the project, opportunity framing, assessment, selection, basic design, engineering procurement, and construction. Chapter 12 is the next step in the evolution of an effective modular implementation plan for the industrial capital project. It's called standardization. We call it the holy grail of pre-assembly. 
It starts with a brief explanation of the potential in cost and schedule savings, referencing both the historical gains of the shipbuilding industry, as well as the more recent CII UMM01 research on standardization. It starts by describing the two different paths for integrating standardization with modularization and the benefits, trade-offs, and basic economics of each. Later, it provides a roadmap in terms of identifying what makes a good candidate, when to start the evaluation process, how to approach the evaluation process, and some of the critical success factors associated with the standardization concept. Chapter 13, delve into recent technologies up for modularization. It examines the important part that uh, technology plays in modularization advancement with the identification of 39 specific technologies with additional discussion on the following. Visualization, information modeling, and simulation. Sensing and data analytics for construction. And robotics and automation. Chapter 14 is dedicated to a semi-formal wrap-up of the book along with some thought-provoking ideas on what the future of our industry might be. It reiterates the author's goals and provides seven specific industry accelerators for that will make the future a more module-friendly world if implemented. It was our, so to speak, post-mortem analysis of our efforts on the book. Chapter 15, our last chapter, provides a resource guide that can be utilized for further follow-up on the future actions suggested for our industry in chapter 14. It lists reports, tools, and academic papers on modernization and standardization that may be considered beneficial in terms of a follow-up study or research, many of which were referenced at one time or the other in the preceding chapters. Finally, and most importantly, where you can find the book. It can be purchased online at major bookstores or through Amazon. Or you can simply Google our book title or search it using the ISBN or DOI. It is available in hard copy or an ebook version. And just for your information, the ebook has all 110 illustrations in color. We also provide presentations and lectures based on our book. Depending on the need, the length can be varied. Here you can see a sample 15-hour lecture syllabus we delivered last year. If you have any questions about our book or need education on consulting services, please contact one of the call authors by email. Thanks for your attention.